Last year, we tested the seventh generation Volkswagen GTI, and I liked that car so much, I considered actually replacing one of my SUVs with that car. Well, I haven't made that replacement yet, because why? Well, that contender has been knocked out of that spot now with what? Another Volkswagen. This here, this is the seventh generation Volkswagen Golf R. And before you write in the comments, oh, this is a huge uh, sponsored review, or here's another fanboy video, I can guarantee you this is not. It's gonna sound like this because one reason, this vehicle ticks all the right boxes for me. The first box that it ticks for me is the appearance, the overall appearance. Some might like the big wings. I'm not a big fan of them, but uh, you know, I'm not saying that they're wrong or they're bad, but just for me, I don't like anything too flashy, and this Golf R doesn't look flashy. It's kind of conservative, but it does have a look of business. It's low, it's wide. You have uh, small little accents like this chrome on the front lip here. You have standard by Xenon headlights, 19-inch wheels, and this is even equipped right now with winter tires. Uh, you have just, like I say, just tiny little trims around that just make it look classy in the rear you do have a spoiler it's very very small uh, on the top valence here and just the overall look you have nice quad tip exhaust like I said it's low it's wide and it's just kind of classy looking second box it ticks is practicality and functionality uh, like a lot of other Volkswagens, one thing I really do love is how they incorporate the backup camera inside the handle of the rear hatch. And what that allows you to have is a nice clear view every time when you actually use that backup camera because there's no uh, uh, dirt or soot or anything covering up that lens. It's always a nice clear picture. But you open it up here, you have a large hatch and you have 60-40 seats that fold down as well if you need more room. And it's a surprising amount of room. Uh, just the other day, I was carrying a large, big box of lighting equipment for doing some filming. And I had put the seats down, I put this huge case in, and I realized I didn't even need to put the seats down, so I put them back up. It fit in there perfect. And I'd have a hard time doing that in other smaller hatches. Now, one of my criteria of my second vehicle is that it doesn't have to be very big. I already have a three-row SUV, so I don't need something that's equivalent in size. Uh, the Golf actually has quite a bit of room. I've got tons of legroom right now, uh, but on occasion, I'm going to have to carry the kids, so two car seats and a stroller do fit in here with no problem. Okay, the next box that gets ticked for me is the interior. Why do I like the interior? It's very simple. It's simple yet classic. It's very usable, intuitive. Now this is equipped with the latest in Volkswagen's infotainment system. This has the tech package and that comes with an eight inch touch screen and includes everything for your navigation, your phone system, all your connectivity, but also Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as well. So that's a real nice feature. Uh, also included in this vehicle, Fender audio system, great sounding system, and a leather interior, leather wrapped steering wheel with a flat bottom, and just small little hints of, of this not being a regular Golf or a GTI. You have the R badging on the seats, a little bit of an R on the steering wheel, and some nice blue accents on the gauges. Now, one thing about the Golf R is when you buy it, it pretty well comes fully loaded. There's not many options. You get to select your color, your transmission, and there's one package, and, and that's the technology package, which they said comes with the eight inch updated screen and some new driving and safety aids, which we'll get to a little bit later. Okay, most car test reviews don't start out with a car full of family members, but this is one of the boxes that I'm ticking as well because this car, if I purchase this car, it's gonna be kind of used for family use as well. Not as much as we're gonna use the three row SUV that we have, but on occasion, there will be times where we will have the car seats in the back and the stroller and the diaper bags and everything else like that. So 
As for room, it does have enough room for the car seats. Now you have to remember now, with car seats, you don't actually just need leg room, you actually need the room from the seat back to the back because for the rear facing, you have the seat back of the car seat that comes really far forward. And for the front facing, you have your child's feet. So is there a lot of room back there? There's not a ton, but like I said, this is not gonna be used primarily to haul the kids around, but on occasion. So this new seventh generation Golf R is based on the new MQB global platform. And that's the same platform as, of course, the Golf is the new Jetta and the upcoming Tiguan as well. The nice thing about that platform is it allows the vehicle to be bigger, stronger, yet lighter. So that stronger part works really well for the Golf R for the performance aspect and the suspension. But also on the MQB platforms, you get a lot more content, you get a lot more safety features. We talked about on the interior that this one has a tech package. Now that's the only package you can buy, as I mentioned, and what that gives you, once again, you get the eight inch uh, screen. You also have a lot of safety features that come with the tech package. And one of them is lane keeping assist, where it will actually keep you within the lines. Here we're on the freeway and hands off, and it's gonna keep me within the lines. Also what it has is adaptive radar cruise control. Uh, right now I've set it with the cars in front of me. You can set your distance. That's a great feature as well. Other things that it has is a blind spot monitoring system, uh, frontal collision uh, mitigation, and also rear traffic cross alert when you're backing up. One other thing that it has, which I'm a really big fan of, uh, at nighttime, when you're actually turning corners, you turn your signal on, you're, it's very, very dark out, it has actually the side assist lights that come on. So it lights up the right or the left side uh, more to the extreme right or left. It's a real handy feature, looking out for pedestrians and things like that. Features like this, you would normally find these on a lot higher end vehicles. One thing about the Golf R, it is a very good value. That's another box that it ticks on my list. Uh, I like value and how much is it? Well, just under $40,000. There's not a lot of options you can buy. You can choose your transmission, your color, and whether or not you get that tech package. Now, if you compare that to the competition, uh, you have the Audi S3, you have the Ford Focus RS, the new one. That does have a little bit more power, or maybe something like the uh, Subaru STI. Those are all very similar cars, and to equip them to the same as what this Golf R is, you're looking at thousands and thousands of dollars more money than this. So before we get into the performance aspect, let's drop off the family. Okay, now we've dropped the family off. Let's start talking about uh, the performance and get a little bit more spirited drive. So the Golf R has a two liter turbo four cylinder engine, pretty well the same size as the GTI, except the Golf R puts out 292 horsepower and 280 foot pounds of torque, which is quite a bit for a car this size. Uh, would I like more power? Of course, you could give me 500 horsepower and I would still want more. Uh, ideally, coming from a BMW background, I had a 335i XI um, coupe and I had the Dynan package on there, which bumped it up to about almost 390 horsepower. Um, now, if people are watching this, if you know anything about this Golf R, is there a certain uh, a package that you can get for that even aftermarket. I think this car would be great with another 50 or 60 horsepower for sure. But as it is, it still is very, very good. It's more than enough power to have a lot of fun. So that power is matched to either a six speed manual transmission or a six speed DSG transmission, which we have here. Normally I would love to have a manual transmission, but if I were buying this car, which I may, I would probably opt for the DSG just for the fact that this is not just going to be a fun toy car, it's going to be an everyday driver and if you're like me and a lot of people that are driving in uh, rush hour traffic a lot of times, I'd like to have that uh, the automatic transmission, especially with that adaptive cruise control, that actually works all the way down to a stop. So when you're in that stop and go or just driving along at five miles an hour, that type of traffic, you can set the cruise control and you don't have to do anything. The car will just kind of drive and brake for you. And it makes it a lot easier for those kind of stressful, boring drives. 
The other advantage of going for the Golf R opposed to say like the GTI is that you get all wheel drive. This one has their fifth generation four motion all wheel drive system. And what that gives you is first of all, you get full time all wheel drive, but it controls from the front to the back up to 100% for the power, but also left to right. And with the new system, what it does, it can use all types of data to predict where you're going to need the power even before the, the tire slips, giving you even better handling and better traction. Like the Volkswagen GTI, the Golf R also has a drive mode selector right down by the shifter. You can just hit the drive mode and you can go from comfort, which basically really softens and dampens the suspension because this is equipped with DCC or dynamic chassis control, which dampens the suspension. So on real cruising rides or with the kids, I might opt to go for the comfort and then we can actually go up one to normal, which is kind of your everyday normal driving, medium uh, tightness for the suspension. We go up one now and that goes into what is, they call race mode or you can just call it performance mode and right off the bat, the suspension gets a lot stiffer. Now, it's still very compliant. It's not gonna rattle your teeth too much. It's not really stiff, but definitely better for some performance handling. Once you put it in that race mode, it also changes the characteristics of the transmission. And with the DSG here, what I really like is the transmission has very, very crisp shifts, but also I like that on the downshifts, it kind of predicts very well when you're gonna need that downshift, when you're stopping or slowing down or when you're entering a corner. And also it does rev matching as well. Now the beauty of this review is I really am diving really into every little detail of this car because I am thinking about purchasing this car uh, as my second car, as I mentioned. And this is not the first time I've actually driven it. I did test drive it in Ottawa last year uh, when it first came out in Canada and I even had a chance to take it out on a racetrack uh, myself and I did some hot laps with former Indy and NASCAR driver Patrick Carpentier who really put it through its paces. I can really tell you on the track and on the road when you really push this car you can feel every little bit. You can feel that suspension really working, diving hard, but it's very, very predictable. If you watched the previous video with Patrick basically putting the car out of shape, you can see how easily he can bring it back around. And, you know, he is a race car driver, but when I did it as well, it is very, very predictable. This car is kind of really like a chameleon. The styling outside is kind of subtle, but and it doesn't yell, look at me. The inside, uh, the materials are very, very first rate. It feels really good. The seats are comfortable and it's very well equipped. And the performance, you can cater this to uh, a, just a leisurely drive to the store, a very soft ride, or you can make it a lot more aggressive, make that engine really growl and perform and have a lot of fun with it. Well, the latest seventh generation Volkswagen Golf R is the perfect car for me, but is it the perfect car for you? Well, if you're looking for a car that is fun to drive, it has quite a bit of horsepower, you have all wheel drive capabilities for handling and for winter driving. You have the latest and greatest in safety and driving aids inside the best in connectivity, you have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, a nice eight inch touchscreen, and not to mention a very, very nice interior. If you tick those boxes, you really owe it to yourself to take one of these for a test drive. Seriously.